Good afternoon and welcome to Borders Rugby Special. Today's commentary game comes from a rather blustery volunteer park and features the National Youth Cup Under-18 semi-final between Hoyk Youth and West of Scotland. As always, before we go to the commentary box, let's find out the views of the coaches. So the team have had a great season so far. They're yep. um, out ahead with wins in their uh, club conference pool. Um, is that giving you confidence for today's game? I th- I think when you come down to hike, I mean I've played a lot of rugby in the borders. You just play the game. We're not, we're not. Uh, as long as we're competitive and we work really hard and we perform well, then hopefully the process and the result will look after itself. Yeah, you managed to score seven tries in your um, quarter final, should I say, against Livingston. And you talked after the game about how they were really good team tries. Yep. Are we looking for that teamwork again today? Definitely. We're going to have to work as a team, especially in conditions as well. Um, probably kick a little bit more than we have in the past, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Teamwork's are the key. It was quoted after your game against Bigger that the boys had played their best game of the season with lots of focus and discipline. Are we going to see that again today? Uh, I sincerely hope so. We'll, we'll definitely need it. Um, West are a good side. Uh, you know, you don't get into the semi-finals of competitions by you know, not concentrating and not being a good team. So yeah, it'll be a good battle. Shame about the weather with the wind, it could spoil it, but uh, we'll give it a go. Yeah, and you remain unbeaten this year. You know, this season's been really good for you. Does that give you confidence today or maybe a little bit trepidation? Well, you know, we've been behind in a few games and come back, so, you know, we're, we're confident the boys can deal with it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if you're constantly winning all the time, um, it's good. The league is very competitive. We're not winning games by huge... Ma- you know, if we were winning games by 30, 40, 50 points every week, you'd be worried. But no, I mean, last week against Peebles here, 21, 29, 19, mm-hmm. tough, tough game for the boys. Um, Peebles are a good side, so... Um, and then before we played Bigger was hard. Before we played Bigger, we played Anik, and it was a tough physical game, so, yeah... We, we've possibly a bit more maybe match sharpened than West. I don't know how many. It's hard to get a handle on how Glasgow teams and Edinburgh teams play and where they're playing. So, uh, no, we, we're confident we can we can uh, do the job. You were a border club player. You know what it's like coming down to play at Hoyke and you know what the Hoyke crowd is like, more importantly. What advice have you given to the boys today because of that? Um, just stay calm. Just stay calm, play the game, relax. Um, it's just another game and they have to treat it that way. Point bled out of the shed, so the captain, Marcus Brogan. The final words just been issued to his teammates in this important fixture. It's certainly going to be a, a big task here for Hoyk to continue that form which seen them beat bigger 13 points to 26 in the quarterfinals West of Scotland they won their tie against Livingston 14 points to 43 so it's going to be a, a chance here for Hoyt to get play underway Owen Gray is the player who is uh, going to get proceedings underway here at Volunteer Park just getting the steady on the 3G pitch it's not a great restart it's a good, not great kick off from uh, the youngster and it's given West of Scotland a, a chance to get some clean hands on the ball and try and get themselves into this game and steady the ship earlier on as it's issued through the hands and start to get a little bit wider. They broke the line already and West of Scotland are almost in behind and it's a covering tackle and offload back inside and West of Scotland are now broaching in deep inside the Hoyt Youth 22 straight from the kick off. A sloppy kick off and then sloppy defensive play from Hoyt Youth who are under the cosh now, deep inside their own 22 as play starts to slow down slightly. And the scrum half just dictate and play around the fringes, just getting his big burly runners to come round the side. And it's a scrappy pass here, which is going to be in these windy conditions. Kicking and accuracy is going to be tested to the limit for these youngsters. A good experience for them to try and really test their skills at the highest level. And it's another run deep into the heart of the Hoyk 22. As the referees just playing advantage to West of Scotland and they try and get the ball away from the ruck there. And they've got Eamon Taki on the corner. And it's going to come back for a penalty. And I'll be interested to see what West of Scotland do here. As the referee is just uh, outlining 
outlining okay, proceedings to both teams. And I think they'll look like they're perhaps going to try and uh, tap and go here. Unless it's gone, do take the quick tap and they go short. And they've got the runner, which I think at the moment, looking at the two teams, they perhaps do have a little bit of an advantage in terms of size. But West of Scotland doing well to regain that ball back, and it's now Sebastian Singh who's sweeping up that ball, just the, the loose bobbling ball around the sides of the, the ruck there. And now issuing to the big centre, he's had a good start to this game. Kerr Yule, the inside centre, a very rangy player. And the ball's passed back inside there to the, the captain, Leighton Kearney. And it's broke free and it is going to be the hooker to go over and get the opening score of this game. And it is Amin Taki who's got the opening score for West of Scotland. And it has been a relentless start from West of Scotland there. It's uh, straight from a kickoff. It was a, a really scrappy kickoff to get proceedings underway. But from there, it's been all West of Scotland, Graham. It definitely has been all West of Scotland daily. You can see it there, an excellent line break from the, the West of Scotland back row and got in behind the Hoyt the Hoyke youth under 18 side and then make it real difficult I think for anybody who's watching on the film here and, and at the ground today the conditions are very very difficult you've seen that with Owen Gray's first kick off and I think the team who can dictate possession who can look after that ball the better is going to be the victors today and obviously West of Scotland done that really well first up yeah really really challenging conditions like it's dry it's, it's, it's lovely it looks glorious here at Hoyke because you can see the sun just shining onto this uh, Immaculate 3G surfaces that fly half Lewis. Hawick is getting the first kick, the first conversion of this afternoon, so he opens his account. So Owen Gray has got a better kick there off the right boot. And you can see it just holding up on in the wind there, and it's now Finn Carden who's looking to try and take it straight into the heart of the Hoyk defence. And you can see that West of Scotland have got a few big Big personnel in there in terms of really physical specimens for being under 18s. They've uh, got a lot of uh, big, big players and over that far side just spilling the ball wide again and really trying to test and stretch this Hoyke defence and just encroaching on that touch line. But it has been recycled there. And again, just trying to play some structured rugby west of Scotland and really get a foothold in this game. And again, from the base, just uh, spilling it out outside of the fly half on this occasion. You say Shaheen with the, the carry there for West of Scotland and now again a good defence there from Hoyt Youth on this occasion just doubling up on the runner well, there's going to be an advantage it's Marcus Brogan who's infringed there according to the referee George Pounder off his feet at the, the breakdown and it's another platform here for West of Scotland to try and break free and try and encroach on this Hoyt Youth line but the referee is going to bring it back for a penalty and it's back to the norm it's the status quo for West of Scotland they get the ball they go direct they go run hard and they're putting this Hoyk defensively under all the pressure they're certainly putting Hoyk under pressure there Dale but a big part of the, the Hoyk game when they won the, the quarter final against Bigger was their defensive structure and how they managed to get off the line and tackle those Bigger boys and obviously today it, it's not happening so far I think we're being pretty passive in defence I think guys like Marcus Brogan and your, your leaders in that in that pack will be getting uh, the boils riled up and making sure we get off that line to make those tackles earlier yeah they definitely need to be a little bit more proactive in the defence Hoyke they've been quite passive in, in these opening exchanges about 6 or 7 minutes into this game they've uh, been second best for the most part but they managed to steal the line out at the front there it has come back on a West of Scotland side so it's a loose ball and it's the inside centre now looking to try and take proceedings forward but the referee has spotted a forward pass and you can finally hear the support in the, the stand here at Volunteer Park you can hear them get behind the Hoyke squad as a decision goes their way and this is the first scrum, the scrum of the game and it's going to be interesting to see what both teams can bring to the set piece yeah set piece is going to be important isn't it but possibly for Hoyk it's not the place you would want your first set piece obviously in that Coffins corner it's going to be very difficult to get out of there with this win so it'll be interesting to see what the Hoyk backline can conjure up and make sure we can get on the front foot they want to release the likes of Eli Hamilton and Finlay Douglas because uh, they're before the game there are a couple of players that Graham Hogg did point out as dangerous players with the ball in hand but it's been seldom an opportunity for Hoyk so far in this game and the ball's offloaded back inside but it's been covered well there by Rudy Forbes who was the player who managed to just get himself in between the passer and the receiver of the ball from the West of Scotland point of view and now the captain looking to try and lead from example Marcus Brogan taking it direct and trying to test this West of Scotland defence and try and steady the ship and get some structure into the game because they've uh, not had a lot of 
opportunity with the ball in hand as there's a little snipe there for Charlie Comley but the referee has brought that back for a penalty so Hoyk tapping because of this really strong wind which is here at Volunteer Park and they try and stretch proceedings and they've done just that they've got an opportunity here with a three on one but he's decided just to tuck it underneath the armpit there Justin Tate with players outside him perhaps picking the wrong option there but he'll be relieved to see that's came back on a green side and Hoyk Youth get the ball again seven points to nil down as it's came to their fly half Owen Gray and he's stabbed that and tried to puncture this really strong wind which is going from across the pitch here it's going from right to left as you're watching this fixture just hurtling down the uh, the park here at Volunteer Park so it's going to be something that is going to play a lot in terms of the way that these players approach this fixture and it's going to be a penalty for a Hoik side and slowly but surely they're starting to get themselves into this game yeah no Hoik will be obviously relatively happy with how they got out of Coffin's corner down there didn't they they managed to use a good skill set and get the ball to the edge now yeah I think, I think we both can agree it's right in front of us here Morgan Tate made uh, Morgan sorry that's his brother <laughs> Justin Tate made the wrong decision to, to not give that pass but Hoik getting on the front foot and just there off of that breakdown you can see you can see the likes of Marcus Brogan getting over that ball. He's a, he's a sturdy young guy. Uh, I've got the privilege of coaching with his, with his old man, Eddie, and he'll be very proud of that, and obviously getting Hoik uh, the opportunity to have an attack here. Yeah, it's good to build a little bit of momentum in the game, have the ball and, and put your opposition under a bit of pressure and invite these, invite these errors, these penalties, which the, the opposition very often give away. So Charlie Comley to put into what looks like a dominant scrum and they were very quick off the back there West of Scotland however uh, play go, uh, continues and Charlie Comley has just gathered that bubbling ball but it's going to be another scrum it's uh, another powerful scrum there from Hoyk as they put the anchor down there and uh, they forced a, an error over on that far side and it's came back on the Hoyk side and it looks like Hoyt's got open prairie there they're going for the post and Finlay Douglas has scooped up that ball he gets the score and Hoyt reply with a, a great opportunistic score and it is the player that you did say before the game Finlay Douglas just getting that loose ball over on that far side the defensive pressure there from Hoyt really putting an aggressive high line in the ball was there for the take and Finlay Douglas takes it and gets the score Hoyk will be really happy with that Dale obviously that dominant scrum that's something that we probably thought the west of Scotland coming obviously from the Glasgow area were going to be dominant but Hoyk showed great power there to get over there pressure as you say in line speed but if he wanted a ball to fall to anybody on this field or that loose connection Finlay Douglas is the one he's uh, he's just like his old man Neil Douglas he played quite a few times for Hoyk and uh, the guy's got squid, uh, scary gas so hopefully that continues for the rest of the day the conversion is successful as well for Owen Gray with about 13 minutes gone in this fixture and that's a very high restart there which has just caught the wind and just travelled a little bit deeper than perhaps what West of Scotland would have liked and it gave Marcus Brogan the, the chance to run from deep and now Dylan Halliday just offering himself up for a run and there's numbers over this far side West of Scotland defence getting really tight but it's bobbled and managed to usher that across and a couple of good fans there from Tate and they take play just in front of us on the stand side. Sean McMichael was the player just gathering that ball, but it has came back in the west of Scotland's side, and it is the initial try scorer for the visitors who's got the ball in his hand now. Taki, the hooker. And that's a big carry there for West of Scotland again, showing a lot of discipline in terms of their approach to the game. A lot of structure trying to get their big players running on the ball, but that's a good tackle in midfield by Gray just stopping momentum and West of Scotland look to try and barge their way out of the contact area there and it's Ross Darach who's uh, got his first opportunity to really scamper with the ball in hand but he's been met with a couple of good challenges there from Hoyt Youth and now Ryan Buck just doing the the hard work of the second row the industrious work just trying to carry and pump the legs to allow the platform to go a little bit wider as West of Scotland get the advantage there from the referee the fly half again just offering that ball to the inside centre a very direct run again from Kerr Yule he's had a, a very impressive outing so far and he's going to be a, a dangerous player to keep an eye out for big 12s you know he's a big 
rangy 12, powerful, and he looks like he's pretty quick as well, and that's, for an inside centre, if you're just going to shovel it into his hands, that's the sort of player that you want outside you as a 10. You definitely want to shovel it into his, don't you? A lovely, a lovely line of running there, he's seen the way he tried to manipulate the, the inside defence of Hoyk there, and just, just cut back on that ball and cut that great angle to go through, and obviously put the Hoyk team under pressure. And that's, oh. it was almost a mistake from West of Scotland, but I think that has then led to a mistake from... Is that Finlay Douglas perhaps on the wing there? Just about keeping that ball out and alive, but they've knocked it on in the process. It's like youth will be wanting to make sure they put the brakes on here and just thwart any any challenge from this set front eight from West of Scotland, but it's a, a clean scrum from West of Scotland and they look to go through Yule again and they're carried over towards the line. The referee looks like he's got a good view of that and I think the inside centre who we just mentioned is a dangerous player. He gets the score. The referee George Pounder happy with that and he has been impressive and he's got a score from close range. It's been very impressive. Basically it was a carving copy of the line he just run just a couple of minutes earlier and just managed to break through that hook defence. I think he carried maybe three or four guys over with him. So an excellent finish uh, for the West of Scotland there. We have to say they have been dominant. I think we can look out there and see when both teams are kicking the ball. They have got that added extra, having that little bit of wind uh, and obviously they're, they're using that and trying to get into those areas uh, and putting an hike under pressure there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to see at this level, and you'll know yourself from playing a lot at, in, at centre. You know, it, it's at this level, it's good. Run direct, run hard. Sometimes genetics are are kind of the winner at this level. But he does look like he's got a bit of rugby intelligence as well in terms of his lines of running and his angles. Is uh, they're just going to have to try and reset this ball? As you can see the wind coming into play there, just um, disrupting Howick's build up to this kick but you know Yule's going to be a, a, a player to keep an eye out during this fixture yeah definitely Hoyker going to need to be Scott Young in particular his opposite number is going to have to be alert and making sure he can get that line speed and get up to get those early tackles so he don't give him the momentum and let him run those nice lines that he's been running so far and it's an attempted kick there and it's uh, scruffy looking but it's very challenging conditions for kickers and hookers and anybody else involved in this game because the wind is just howling across this park. A guy I'd really like to see come into the game here is Eli Hamilton. As I say, in training this week, he, he's got scary feet. He, he could beat you on a sixpence. He could certainly beat me on a sixpence. So I'd love to see him with a little bit of space and get his hands on the ball. Uh, definitely a player to watch out for. He might be more, more pivotal in the second half when the wind's perhaps at their back and they look to try and get into these better positions. But Tate just playing on the, the right hand side of the scrum there is just gobbled up by his opposite man Charlie Greaves who's just trying to ragdoll young Justin Tate and uh, he certainly looks like that is a little bit of a mismatch in terms of physicality uh, Greaves looks like a, a very stocky outside centre where uh, Justin Tate is a little bit a, bit a little bit leaner but he's just trying to explain to his teammates there that he's maybe wanting somebody to run a little tighter line to bring him out of trouble and offer that support line up and he made some good yards as West of Scotland looked to try and go through the phases again just play it one out look to try and go direct and suck this Hoyt defence in as they go blind here good hands there and it's now Yule just to get through to his winger it's fortunate there for West of Scotland and it's some defensive work here now for Hoyt because they've got to work hard because Spence was weaving his way towards that try line and now Young who's looking to just cut an acute line and set the platform up again for West of Scotland and again the advantage is coming and it's an attempted offload there in the open play from Shaheen but just doesn't go to hand on that occasion that's about third, that's the third no rolling penalty you guys speak to the players right Kane trying to go from uh, pick up from the base and there's uh, manipulated a two and one opportunity in West of Scotland of looking to dance back in field Patrick Spence looks like he, he could have tested his opposite man and won that foot race but Hoyk doing really really well on the floor to get that ball back on their side because that was dangerous there and the referee is going to award the penalty to West of Scotland for an infringement I think they'll be looking to try and go quick here but Spence has maybe coughed up an opportunity for West of Scotland there but they've got a, a second chance from the penalty here as they tap and go and try and just go direct yet again Finn Carden again the big burly number 8 looking to try and just use his strength and win the battle against this Hoyk side and now his back row partner he's caught on his back he's looking to try and twist over looking to try and turn but the referee is going to bring that back yellow
And it is going to be a yellow card there for Hoik. So down to 14 men in the dangerous area as well. And it's uh, Corbin coming, who's going off, but West of Scotland looking to try and get play straight underway. And it's their second row, Ryan Burke looking to try and get over the line. And good defensive play there, managing to hold up the attacking player. And Gray looking to try and go quick, and he's kicked that very open. Unfortunately for him, it has bobbled out and went into touch, but you could hear your reaction. And you, we've got a great view here, and I can see his idea, but he almost, if that stays in play, you're, you're, you're manufacturing a, a really open opportunity for the opposition. It's going to be a putting back to the scrum and it's West of Scotland in again, an impressive scrum from these white youngsters and it's going to be a free kick to West of Scotland. Just not happy with uh, that scrum there, the referee. And West of Scotland wasting no time yet again. And it's uh, Sebastian Singh. We've got the ball in hand, it looks like it's coming onto a hike side and this is getting pretty feisty in terms of both teams really going for it now and you can hear the spectators beside us on the right hand side some classmates and friends and family really getting behind this Hoyt team but Hoyt get it back on their side and again looking to try and recycle through Donaldson the scrum half again getting there in Brogan now getting a chance and there's a lot of snipe here from Comley as he looks to try and go round the fringes but He's certainly sucked in this defence and it looks like there's an overlap on that far side and that is a great tackle from Ross Darach over on the west of Scotland side. And it looks like it could have came back on the west side. It was uh, certainly a chance there but it's now open field running. And west of Scotland looking to try and take some advantage of uh, the splintered Hoyt defence from that turnover. And they just steady the platform over on that far side and again the scrum half Buchanan trying to find some willing runners and he's found a, a big burly runner but he's offloaded to a Hoyt player and now it's the opportunity for Hoyt youth to try and strike if they can get this ball away quickly there's numbers up on the stand side but I think perhaps on this occasion the momentum might have been lost as Hamilton's just not able to gather that ball a little step back inside wrong foot Yule for the West of Scotland players there in abundance to try and win the ball back but Hoyt really doing well on the floor to get the ball back on their side and they do get the advantage and the referee is going to give the penalty and uh, Gray looks to go quickly behind the referee so the referee is going to bring that back but there's a chance there good from Hoyk to stop any sort of momentum because it was a good broken field run there from uh, Ryan Burke to West of Scotland second row managed to get the turnover on the stand side and then looked to try and go quickly but the referees brought that back there here you know the, the players are using their initiative and their vision and you know really developing as rugby players and that is a great friend from Huey Donaldson and he's just cutting back in field to his winger Sean McMichael and again just presenting that ball back and it is Donaldson who gets round in support the work rate from these uh, in both sets of players has been very impressive so far as Gray spills the ball out there to Young Young trying to get the ball through the hands and they've manipulated this overlap and it is now Hamilton over on that far side back in field but there isn't a player there that has came back on a hike side but it has been knocked on there so Finlay Douglas does not benefit from the ball going to the ground there and that was a chance for Hoik again and you can see as soon as they stretch this field great skills to get the ball out in front get the quick pass in but they're really stretching this West of Scotland defence. A great launch play there by uh, Hugh Joe Donaldson, uh, brother of, of Bra Bailey Donaldson, who's a 15 for Hoyk just now, and he just managed to come on this short side to give Hoyk that extra little bit of space on the other side to then be able to go and play. There is going to be a, a put-in to the scrum, Brodie Buchanan. He's uh, tasked with getting the ball in there, and it's uh, just spilled out the side. And I think that's going to perhaps bring first half proceedings to a close. We do have an interesting second half lined up here at Volunteer Park. And it is winner takes all. Whoever wins this fixture proceeds and goes through to the final at Murrayfield in the National Youth Cup. So this National Youth Cup semi-final, it's currently West of Scotland who are in the lead. They hold the advantage. But Hoyk will have a lot to say about that come the second half. It's currently Hoyk Youth 7, West of Scotland 12. And this is a, a great a platform for Hoyt to try and strike from. They'll have to hit their target there. They do hit their target, but it's not came back on a Hoyt side as it's West of Scotland who've got the ball in hand, but the referee 
is just issuing the orders there, saying it's going to be a scrum and difficult for a hooker to throw into the wind and be, be accurate at the line -out. Yeah, it's definitely a hard one, isn't it? We've mentioned about goal kickers, we've mentioned about kicking out of hand and hookers, specialised skill and very difficult as well, but Fergus Bell's a really good player, he's obviously a, a young for, for this age group and, and hopefully he will, he will learn from that one and you'll get plenty of opportunities in this second half. Yeah, these are the, the, the places you need to be practising these skills and it was... Uh, it did almost go to plan there for Hoyk Youth, but West of Scotland now looking to try and attack from deep inside their own 22, but they've coughed up possession, and it's now the scrum half Comley who's looking to try and dance and weave himself out of danger. The play has slowed down, but Hoyk have got a secure ball there. The captain just issuing the ball through the hands, and it's almost worked out there for Hoyk. Bell was the, the player with the, the ball in hand as it came through the hands there of the uh, forwards. Ball's rolled in there, and Comley doing well, and uh, very quick. The, the West captain off the, the back of the scrum, but he's just he's just been brushed off there by a, a nice deft sidestep there from Great. And plays came back open side as West has got their hands all over that ball there in the close tight areas, and it's the Tauren uh, tight head prop Adam Young who had his uh, hands on the ball there and forced the turnover. And that perhaps there is the, the opportunity gone on this occasion for Hoyk Youth. And you'd imagine there may be a couple more opportunities as this game progresses, but West of Scotland get to kick downfield, and that'll be disappointing from a, from a Hoyk point of view. And especially when you've got the wind, it plays in your mind, doesn't it, that you need to use it all the time. But, you know, just there, you just need to go back to basics, go direct and, and, and go off the training ground. Yeah, no, Hoyk will be massively disappointed with that, uh, being able to launch off of there. A great opportunity in that left-hand corner. But as you say, we've got plenty of time, we've got another opportunity. That's the, the best thing about it, as we've mentioned before. About this age group of rugby, there's no fear. So let's see what they can bring here. And that's a, another unforced error there for West of Scotland as Hoyk looked to try and go blind and the, the pass not going to hand there, but it's been swept up well there by Fergus Bell. He manages just to swoop on that loose ball. And now Corbin Cummins, who's uh, fresh from the sin bin, He's going to make up for the, the ten minutes that he's been sitting in the, the dugout. His ball's put through the hands and it's Donaldson. Just spinning out of a very big collision. And Scott Young now, inside centre, trying to do what Kerr Yule done in the first half and just stick it up the jumper and go direct and really try and test this defensive line. And Hoyt going well, going side to side and just bringing Bell back into the game. It was uh, Bradley, uh, Brady Wilson there, showing a good uh, skill set. And now the, re the replacement now, Jack Henderson. He's been hoisted off the ground and now he's been brought back down to ground very, very quickly there by his opposite number. And now Bell in the open side. He looks like he could have a little bit of support on his shoulder but just can't get that free arm. So calmly having to dig about in the ruck there, not really contested as uh, West of Scotland just flood that defensive line. As Hoyt looked to try and go around the corner and Comley's just sizing up his options. He's got great, sitting pretty deep. He throws a dummy and tries to evade the first challenge, but he's just ragdolled down to ground on the, the cusp of the 22. And the ball's now through the hands. And a, a nice little sidestep there back to Young, who goes back inside, but the referee is uh, going to bring play to a, a stop there. It is Donaldson who's got the ball at the base. He finds a scrum half who again has just managed just to pirouette out of trouble. He's had a very good game so far. Comley, I've been impressed with him. As it's came back on the west know. side, they've managed to get the ball back in their mitts now. And they'll look to try and go from deep yet again to try and get closer to at least the halfway line. We've not seen a lot of West of Scotland from an attacking point of view in the second half. However... It's uh, not to try and tempt fate as West of Scotland do break up this side here. And now it is the winger, Patrick Spence. He's got a one-on-one -on -one here with Hamilton. Hamilton just going round the legs, but it is Spence who manages just to get out of trouble. But great scampering defence there from Finn Douglas who gets across and just stops that attacking effort on this occasion. But there's space on this far side and they dart over the line and it looks like it's Youssef Shaheen who's got the try there. And just as I'm saying that West of Scotland haven't really shown much attacking intent in the second half, they go from their own 22, sloppy defence, but they get a score over on that far side. And it's going to be a put into the scrum for West of Scotland. The replacement scrum half, Callum Rutherford, rolling the ball in. Managing to get the ball away cleanly from the base and it's just tipped on there and West of Scotland looking to go 
from deep and it is Patrick Spence over on that far side managing to get the offload and keep play alive to get some more momentum some more territory from their attacking strike move off of the, the scrum deep inside their own 22 and they've made good inroads yet again as this hug defence again is put under a lot of pressure but they win the penalty on the floor there so Liam Bouglas's first real task is to try and put his nine under pressure the front row doing their job as well up front and now West of Scotland looking to try and go from deep but that's great defensive play there from uh, Bouglas who's just came on obviously the fresh legs there allowed him to scamper across the field and, and scrag the attacking West of Scotland player and now West of Scotland looking to really try and protect that ball very very close to their own try line and the Hoyt players filter in there because they know that the opportunity is available and it is Bouglas is dancing back in field he's wrapped up there it's certainly punching above his weight in terms of the two players that he was uh, trying to take on but Hoyt looked to try and come tighter and it's Scott Young who's been asked to just truck it up as he gets some structure into their game and now the number 8 Donaldson he's isolated slightly and it looks like it could have been turned over but with a turnover it looked like the player had been marched back and the referee is going to give the penalty to Hoyk so they need to go quickly and it is now in the hands of Young Young looking to try and offload to that teammate there almost over the line just close enough the referee just trying to get a little look at where the, the ball is located and they dive over the line and I think the referee has awarded the score and it can tell by the young team at the right hand side it looks like they did get the score there and I think it perhaps looks like it's uh, was it their captain there? was it their captain Marcus Brogan who's got the score but it was a, a very well worked try they managed to get themselves into an attacking an attacking situation and they managed just to pounce in the tight enclosure there the tight spaces and really make it count on that occasion now 12 points to 17 this is now our semi-final if the kick goes over everything to play for in these closing stages of this game and there's Owen Gray the right footed kicker is looking to try and add the extras with the wind at his back he's got a good connection with that and it's just glanced in front of the sticks a big few minutes it's interesting I think discipline's a big thing great steal there by Hoyt the ascendancy here and it's Bell who's come round the corner and he's got himself on the floor. It's a, a couple of hands in there for West of Scotland, but Bouglas doing well to, to dig about in there. And now the captain looking to try and trundle it up and try and go direct. He's been gobbled up by the, the, probably West of Scotland's best player, Kerr Yule, but he's won on that occasion, uh, Marcus Brogan. And now a chance for the prop, Dylan Halliday. He's trying to make some inroads now and again Hoyt just trying to go through the phase. He's almost getting isolated but doing well to protect the ball. As the players just bundle in there. I think to try and make the referee's job that bit harder is seeing the misdemeanours on the floor. But Ungre now going direct again, going straight through and he's knocked the ball on. And it's came back in a West of Scotland side and they're going from deep inside their own goal area. And they managed just to get over the other side of the line but the referee is going to bring that back for a scrum and maybe not the right option on that occasion for Gray yeah it's a difficult one West done really well on the ground there to slow a couple of phases before that just to take away the momentum there from the Hoig side but Owen Gray trying to restart that again obviously unfortunate a knock on here but again as you just mentioned off the line out a set piece where West of Scotland will not be wanting to play in here but West of Scotland do get that ball back on their side and they're looking to use big care Yule again just asked by his teammates to set the set the platform and it's an interception there it's an interception by Finlay Douglas he read that like a boot blocks it from the clutches of West of Scotland he's over the line and what a score that was did not see that coming <laughs> i never seen it coming Dale what an absolute we mentioned it Kerr Yule a great carry to manage to get over the uh, to get over the gain line there but as I say the exuberance of use we mentioned it a few times today and just West of Scotland trying to play out of there and managing to get that interception Finlay Douglas again he's, had a, he's not had many opportunities today but the two that he's had he's taken very well and obviously managed to get Hoyk into this position I'm not sure how long's left but in my opinion, far too long. No, because, uh, yeah, I could have uh, not that organised my what I've not restarted my watch for the second half, but Finlay Douglas just managing to see 
what I don't think anybody else in the stadium could see. Oh. It's now a chance here for a, a conversion and it's been charged down. Justin Tate, who had a chance to add the extras to nudge Hoig Youth in front, has been charged down 17 points all as we approach the closing stages of this National all. Youth Cup semi-final. Honours even. Next score, you'd imagine, is going to be T Murrayfield and that could be the two points which will come back to bite Hoik on the bum. And from the restart, it is West of Scotland who managed to get the ball. A lot of pressure here on the West of Scotland player. He needed no effort to get up. And maybe, <laughs> I think the border side of me is perhaps losing my impartiality as a commentator here. But uh, Taki now for West of Scotland just taking the ball direct there. And the number eight, Finn Carden, who's had a, a reasonably quiet second half. He was really good in the first half. It came back on the hike side. Up. And that is a great kick downfield. Finn Douglas has the skates on, putting a little bit of pressure on. West of Scotland, and it's going to be dotted down there by Ross Darach. It's a goal line. So it's, it's going to be line. dotted down, and I think Graham Hogg is uh, stating that it's a, a goal line dropout. I think the assistant referee is going to have a little chat as well. So this is going to be interesting. It's, and who says that uh, youth rugby isn't exciting and interesting? <laughs> this has been a brilliant game. Now Yule again passing at the back on this occasion and the Hug defence has been asked to drift and Finn Douglas managing to get a cross and just um, clamp his opposite man as West of Scotland make their way up to the halfway line and now the big runners sing now and just presenting that back and bobbling as the, the fullback Stuart Black is asked to play first receiver and he's just issuing some instruction as Hoik now maybe perhaps getting a bit keen getting very narrow in defence but they're all over that ball on the floor the referee's got a keen eye on that but West of Scotland do well to get it back on their side and now again the, the full back who's stepped up to first receiver Stuart Black is getting out of danger there and as you can hear from the roar from the crowd that is a knock on the ball's going to come back on a hike side George Pounder has a quick look at his watch we still have time here and again good defence from Hoyk who have uh, grown and grown into this game we spoke about him quite a lot obviously with his two tries but excellent defensive play there by Finlay Douglas he gave the guy the outside it must be uh, having that luxury having that extra little bit of pace deal that we certainly never had <laughs> and just able to goad the guy into uh, his opposite number to see where he was going to go and then was able to make the hit and put them under pressure to get that knock on another opportunity here to see what the Hoyt, young Hoyt backline can do it's going to be young Douglas to roll into the scrum. A bit of pressure coming from West of Scotland, but it is in the hands of Gray, who's got Douglas just working hard off his wing. A great pass over there at the far side. Now Hamilton, who's looking to try and get out of danger. He does offload to the supporting winger. He tries to get the offload in there again, but it's not came to a Hoyk hand. It is now, and it's in the hands of Douglas. And Hoyk doing well to protect that ball. And now Donaldson just going around the corner. He's bundled back into the, the contact area and where the ruck was. And you can see Charlie Greaves with his hands in there trying to make a nuisance of himself and Yule in there as well. But Hoyt looking to just go tight and keep the ball in the tight exchanges and try and force this penalty perhaps as uh, West of Scotland try and contest this on the floor. And there's been a charge down there from Gray as it's going to bubble back on the West of Scotland side. It's a knock on there from the fullback Stuart Black. A charge down on the kick, perhaps Owen Gray getting a little bit shallow when he was kicking there. And it's an opportunity, it was an opportunity for West of Scotland to grab that victory. But just getting a little bit keen, snatching at the ball, knock on. And that's danger averted for Hoyt Youth on that occasion. Danger averted there, but... Are you all right? Uh, I'm not <laughs> sure what the heart rate's at, but definitely I'm up and down like a yo-yo here. Uh, nah, as you say... All credit to West of Scotland there. They're, they're obviously fighting to, to come out there and try and get that turnover and obviously having a fly up there. And uh, Owen Gray certainly making headlines uh, today in terms of how he's playing. Oh. And we can see obviously what happens. Good play, in good this distribution. Last few good distribution from Gray. And he's got it over this far side. A kick downfield. It's a scruffy kick which doesn't come off well. And it looked like he was perhaps uh, a trip there by Carden, but I think it was maybe accidental. Yeah, I think when we're looking at the setup of this back line. Owen Gray's obviously, I know I keep speaking quite a lot about him, but he's came back onto the field of play. I think it's pretty obvious he's carrying an injury, he's struggling to run about there. So I think obviously his distribution is going to be key here to try and launch this back line into getting some attacking format. And here's the evidence of his distribution here as he uh, manages to find his target and they do try and get Hamilton. And now they've got Douglas, who's the danger man on the wing. He perhaps did have the chance to release Hamilton on the wing, but I 
think he was uh, perhaps trying to fight to gather the ball but it's came back on a west of Scotland side and Donaldson doing well on the floor to try and gather that ball it looks like he made a good fight of that as well and now Yusuf Shaheen who's asked to carry the ball being held in there and West of Scotland now looking to try a cross field kick and put them under a bit of pressure it's not went to hand and Shaheen is just going to be withdrawn from the uh, the game a, a little injury there and he's going to be taken off but they've, uh, the referee has blown full time there the referee has blown full time West of Scotland look overjoyed with the fact that they've perhaps progressed to the final and I wonder whether I think that Milton Brown is telling his players to calm down I wonder whether that is the rule of the, the first try scorer yeah it's certainly a bit of an anti-climax to the end of the game isn't it it's not the result any team was looking for with the draw uh, and everything feels a little bit flat here now at full time and that is absolutely heartbreaking if you're a Hoyt youth player or if you're a Hoyt youth parent you know, that, that is really bitterly disappointing because, unfortunately for Hoyt, they just can't get over the line and it is West of Scotland on this occasion who are going to go through to the National Youth Cup Final at Murrayfield. They'll play the winners of the other fixture, the other semi-final, which was Birmingham versus Stirling County. So they'll be playing the winner of that um, later on this year. It finishes 17 points all in the semi-final and it is West of Scotland who go through. The young boys may not feel it just now. Uh, I can pretty much guarantee they'll certainly not feel it. It's a massive learning process for them, isn't it? Obviously, everybody wants to go to the final, and especially to lose in these type of circumstances is something that you can only grow from. A lot of these boys are moving on to senior rugby next year, so they've got the opportunity to go to, to your Mansfield State, the volunteer with the Lindeen Baker Street with the Quins, and they're only going to learn from it. So as I say... Yes, we've got to a semi-final. Yes, unfortunately, we've been beating that semi-final, but it's all life lessons, it's all rugby lessons for what, what's to come in the next few years. We're obviously older now, and looking back to our 18s days and how much we enjoyed them, and this is probably the memory for a lot of these boys that's going to stick in their head. But as you say, I keep going back to it. It's a massive part of, of my role in the development side of things, that these are life lessons for these guys. As I say, they're, they're massive life lessons. Not everything's going to go their way in life, and it's not nice to see any of the scenes we're seeing out here with some of the boys in tears with their parents and stuff but but that's sport and as I say whether we like it or not we have to learn from it uh, it was a tough game uh, tough one to take after uh, being so close at 16s and then coming just to the pip again uh, 18s it's a tough one to take especially on the home ground um, but fair it was a good game and it was a uh, it's tough on the tape really at the end yeah but as a captain you'll be, you'll be proud of the way that your your players got back into the game because West of Scotland came out really really quick uh, they, came out, they came out strong uh, hitting up strong we were kind of line speed wasn't there weren't it tough enough and uh, they would get the first try in but uh, after that I gave us a kick kick in the balls they needed and uh, the boys came back and um, got back into it especially playing into the wind the first half we were still there and going down to 14 men but uh, and then I thought the second half with wind they were gonna this was us we've got to give the backs a run and they had they had their chances they were playing in their half most of the second half I'd say I had uh, kicks to touch uh, in there 22 quite a bit but uh, we just couldn't uh, finalise on that finishing piece getting over the line but I was pretty good uh, all the boys put in their shift and we've made it through and that's what we came here to do you started very well like you started very explosively came out the traps and, and put Hoyk under a lot of pressure is that something which has been common in your play this season uh, working more in defence definitely was a big thing this season focusing on it for the last couple of weeks heard they were good in there attacking over the ball quick so we had to counter that as quick as we could so came out decided to target that first and we can come back into our game and strike them where it hurts a lot of good players and I was especially impressed with your, your whole back row were really good but uh, Yule in the centre was good he was uh, fundamental in terms of the way that you were playing using him as a big attacking platform but he's big and strong Sammy's and just gave him a ball and he could smash right through because yes they were close as forwards and tacking close but then if we get Kerr on the outside of that he could smash right through the way that Hoyt Youth got back into the game was really impressive. It shows your character and it shows how close you are as a team in terms of you've played together for a long time. That's it. Um, it was the exact same with Bigger. We went down and we came back. It's been quite a slow start in the whole season, but um, it's, we have got a good team spirit. It's just, uh, just unlucky. It's that, you could say it's a yellow card, but it's not just a yellow card. It's a whole 70 minutes of the rugby we played of 
giving the penalties away to lead to the yellow card. Like, you don't want to just blame it on the yellow card. As a whole, tried our best and it just wasn't our day, really. Uh, no, we, we're happy that we've went through. Could have, maybe like the last 20 minutes, could have been more in the attack, stayed a little bit in defence, but it was good for us and a win's a win. We're through, so yeah, I, happy. Yeah, definitely. And uh, obviously it's going to be a, a, a challenge in the final against Borough Muir. I think they were the, the victors against Stirling County. What are your hopes for the, the, the final against what is going to be a, a very difficult opponent? Just keep what we're doing, play our game, don't get drawn to theirs and play how we can play and hopefully pull through. Well, congratulations today and, and good luck in the final, buddy. Right, thank you very much, thank you.